Um, but yeah, what people say, <laughs> big up Lisa. Thank you so much. I appreciate the comment, Lisa. Thank you. Um, moving on from that one. What else I went to speak about here? Bear with me one second. I think I was going to mention. Oh, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. Have you guys seen this? This is pretty crazy and pretty funny. So for some reason, people on social media were getting really annoyed and really angry with flipping Gwyneth Paltrow of all people, right? Gwyneth Paltrow was getting stick online for sharing that she basically doesn't eat much because she's a flipping, you know, A-list a Hollywood um, actor who's been at the top of her game for more than three decades and hasn't looked, you know, dissimilar. Basically, she's aged, but size-wise, she's been the same since she burst onto the scene until now. So you would imagine somebody of her level and of her skill and of her looks would obviously have some sort of you know extreme dietary regime to make sure she's still landing the roles and looks a particular way but for some reason the internet you know was shocked and horrified to learn that a really famous actress probably doesn't eat too much so she basically was sitting down in an interview on a podcast talking to a doctor i think as well about her basically lifestyle and eating habits and this caught everybody off guard and they really didn't understand how to react to it let me play a clip of her speaking about her dietary requirements here whoops not the one that let's press it now i eat dinner early in the evening i do a nice intermittent fast i usually eat something about 12 mm -hmm. um and in the morning i'll have some things that won't spike my blood sugar right so i i have coffee but i really like soup for lunch um i have bone broth for lunch a lot of the days try to do one hour of movement so i'll either take a walk or i'll do pilates or i'll do my tracy anderson and then i get in the sauna i dry brush and i get in the sauna so i do my infrared sauna for 30 minutes and then for dinner i try to eat you know according to paleo so lots of vegetables it's really important for me to support my detox what's your wellness routine well, well, look well, like well, now well, well. i eat dinner so for me that was no that was no real big surprise to hear somebody like her doesn't you know sit down and eat a fry up like i do or something in the morning with baked beans and toast and two sausages and shit clearly not to look the way that she does but for some reason the internet got really up in the tizzy about it and um, was you know making it a conversation piece there was tons of fat girls on social media basically you know projecting onto her which is also weird because i feel like in the world that we're living now if there's going to be fat acceptance there should also, there should also be an understanding that there are some people out there that really do care about what they look like and that they will go to extreme lengths to make sure that they look a particular way so i think both people should be allowed to coexist without having to call each other names so if you want to be fat as fuck you can and if you want to be skinny as fuck you can just let's just kind of you know live and love together and not learn to kind of point fingers and throw stones at each other but you know this is social media this is the internet if somebody does something you don't agree guess what you tell them to stop and you tear them down and you shout at them so people shouted enough at Gwyneth Paltrow which she doesn't usually do she doesn't usually respond she usually just kind of lets it go but she decided to respond to all the negative blowback she was getting and basically explain why she does what she does and I think in my opinion she kind of lied and made an excuse to make it you know to make what she's doing in terms of her dietary choices you know somewhat um to make people not stop talking about it basically i think that's what she she basically lied about it and said that she has long covid which i don't think is true um i just think you know if you're a attractive actress and you are you know especially if you know anything about hollywood you know uh, the the older women get the roles for them kind of diminish so you basically have to try and do loads of things to ensure that you're still getting the roles and sometimes one of the things that you can do to make sure you're top of the game just make sure you're a certain size and you look a certain way so that people can consider you getting casted so whatever she has to do to kind of be considered that level she'll obviously keep doing and um that's what she's been doing these days but anyway this is i'm going to power to responding to the backlash that she received for her um bone broth um dietary traces let's see what she has to say um okay so let's jump into this so i think it's important for everybody to know that i was doing a podcast with my doctor so this is a person that i've been working with for over two years now um to deal with some chronic stuff and i have long covid so i have been and the way it manifests for me is very high levels of inflammation over time so i've been working with dr cole to really focus on foods that aren't inflammatory right so 
lots of vegetables, cooked vegetables, all kinds of protein, healthy carbs to really lower inflammation. And um, it's been working really well. This is, you know, based on my medical results, um, and extensive testing that I've done over. So just to finish, you know, this was a this was a transparent look at a conversation between me and my doctor. It's not meant to be advice for anybody else. It's really just what has worked for me and it's been very powerful and very positive. This is not to say that, you know, I eat this way all day, every day. And by the way, I eat far more than bone broth and vegetables. I eat Lies. whole meals. Lies. Um, and I also have a lot of days of, you know, eating whatever I want and eating, you know, French fries and whatever. Lies. But, my baseline and it really has been like to try to be healthy and to eat foods that you know will really calm calm the system down so i love how she said french fries in passing like she's just like yeah, french fries like i don't believe her it kind of reminds her of that time in coachella when uh, mcdonald's had a had a stand i think it was around the pandemic times mcdonald's sponsored a little section in coachella and they had all these hot instagram girls like the madison bears and i think some of the jenners come and stand and pose and of course they paid them a lot of money but it's just hilarious to think that you know they were using those girls to advertise mcdonald's because like when's the last time do you think those girls ate mcdonald's especially in a run-up to flipping coachella they probably all were flipping eating cucumbers and flipping with you know cucumbers and hummus all day, every day, and carrot sticks. They weren't eating nothing else. So the idea that they were doing all that is absolutely hilarious. But what I think as well, what, think what Lisa H said in the comments here in the chat was really interesting about Eugenia Cooney. I think I'm the same. I think I'm one of those weird people who gets into, you know, who likes to kind of dig in and see what people are saying online. And I remember one time, ages ago, I kind of ended up on like a different side of Twitter because you can, you know, black Twitter, whatever exists, all that sort of stuff. And ended up finding... Um, eating disorder Twitter and eating disorder Tumblr. This is no, maybe no. I first saw it on Tumblr. There was a whole scene of like girls online. You'd assume were girls that will be posting stuff about you know being skinny, about having a particular gap between your legs, about your ribs showing. Like just eating disorder Twitter was mad in it at that time in terms of being a particular shape. And then of course at the time. It transferred onto onto flipping um, Twitter, and now it's become a big thing on there with a lot of girls posting pictures of certain models that they want to look like, and you know dietary plans and whatnot, and how to suppress your hunger and fasting things, and it's a scene that exists. And I've always thought in my head that if one extreme exists, the other extreme does exist, where there's other people on the other side of the flipping spectrum who just don't care about their appearance, don't want to be skinny, want to be loved the way they are, and not mocked and stuff for being big or curvy or whatever it may be. And I think those two people can exist on two, you know, those two point of views can, can coexist, in my opinion. But I also think, I'm also kind of just curious to know, why is it that people just lie to themselves? Because I feel like, What's been happening nowadays, especially if you read all the accounts of the global, um, the global shortage of that, you know, in the global shortage in that drug or Zempic, that um, appetite suppressant that's meant for people to have diabetes, but now it's turned into like a weight loss drug, basically like a miracle drug because it suppresses your hunger or it makes food not be too tasty or something like that. I remember somebody saying there's a national shortage or worldwide shortage of a Zempic. People selling it on the black market, dark market for three, four, five times its value, right? Like illegally and whatnot. So clearly more there's more people out there who really wish that they were skinny, but they can't do it the traditional way in terms of dieting and working out so they want to find an alternative way that could kind of help them along the way and they've all basically taken those Olympics. so clearly most more people out there want to be there's more people out there who want to look like Gwyneth Paltrow then there's more people out there that want to look fat it's just the facts of the numbers but for some reason online people like to lie and you know and and virtue signal and get all outraged fake outrage basically when someone like a Gwen basically is honest and basically fesses up because she could have lied if she wanted to she could have done what every actress does or every actor does and lied about what they eat um and say yeah i like to have cake i like to do this when really you know they don't eat jack shit they drink water they do loads of workouts um you know they're they're, they're on broccoli and chicken was every single day to make sure that they are on tip-top shape to allow them the possibility to book roles because they're, they're working in industry where they have to get chosen you know they don't decide what jobs they get someone has to pick them and a, a good way to increase 
you know your your chances of getting roles is to make sure you're a certain size just to kind of you know not to rule you out in terms of the pick because there's loads of different types of people there's i imagine there's loads of types of actress out there who kind of have the similar Gwyneth Paltrow look so if she can be as skinny and as in shape as those other girls but also have the experience and the knowledge of the industry and the expertise she's definitely going to get the role but you gotta have to be a certain size to kind of get into that kind of you know um community but yeah clearly for me the ozempic shortage is a clear indicator people are full of shit most people do want to be skinny but they just you know like most adults when you grow up you just realize that it's either really hard or it's something that just takes um a lot more effort than you maybe did when you were younger it shouldn't just become a little bit harder so if there's a drug that could maybe speed things up a little bit you're going to end up taking it and most people are doing the fact but there are also people out there like Gwyneth Paltrow who exist who've been living this life because I don't think this is new to Gwyneth Paltrow she's probably fasting before it was trendy she was probably just drinking bone broth every day before it was trendy and now it's become trendy people are now kind of chastising her about her but let's look at the lady she's what 50 years old or something right and those cheekbones don't lie right those that, that face doesn't lie that's a face with like minimal um work done or, or what not minimal but like you know not not as much as the average hollywood actress and you'd imagine the reason why is because for the most part she's kept her you know her vitals in tip-top shape for a long long period of her career and now she's reaping the benefits of it because now she looks the way she looks and she you know can basically get by with not eating too much because she's trained her body not to be hungry over time or whatnot and i think it works for her if it works for her let her be happy let her be happy